Hello and welcome to Credit as an Asset, a guide to credit building. My name is Darrison. I'll be your facilitator. Credit as an Asset is a course designed to help you strategically build credit. What makes our course unique is that we focus on credit building as opposed to just solely focusing on credit remediation, aka credit repair or debt elimination. Now, that's not to say these things are not important because they are, but it's just that we found that there's a gap in terms of credit curriculum. There's not that much out there on how to strategically build credit and connect to the appropriate credit building product. Credit can be confusing for some of us. That's why it's important that we define the different terms that are associated with it, such as credit history, credit reports, and credit score. Sometimes we use these terms interchangeably when they actually mean different things. So let's uh, review some basic terms just to make sure that we're starting off on the same page. Uh, first, credit history or your credit file. That's just your overall experience with opening and managing credit, uh, you know, your credit accounts with different businesses. So think of this kind of like your grade book with all your assignments recorded in it. It shows your entire report of history, not just one assignment or a test. Your credit report, on the other hand, this is a snapshot of your credit history at a particular point in time and it's pulled for a specific purpose. Uh, so meaning your next door neighbor cannot just pull your credit report. Next, credit scores. Uh, your credit score, th this is a summary of your credit report, but boiled down to a three digit number. And this is the, th this three digit number, it's, it's, it's powerful in the sense that this is what illustrates to lenders and businesses your risk level. So, a credit score could be comparable to your GPA, if you think of it that way. So what's a good credit score? It depends. It depends on the score model that we're looking at and the version of the credit score that we that we are um, looking at. The chart here in front of you it has three categories: poor credit, fair credit, and good or excellent credit. So now this is going to vary depending on the score model. But generally, there's a consensus that often the ranges that we are seeing here from 300 to 550 is considered poor. Having good credit helps us find more affordable financial product. It increases our access, affordability, and options for things like rent, you know, renting an apartment, landlords check uh, credit reports now. Uh, they, they use this information to, to determine whether to rent to you and sometimes how much of a security deposit they want you to put down. Same thing for utilities and cell phone plans. Um, if you walk into a T-Mobile or Verizon or Sprint, whatever carrier you got, and you want to finance a phone, they're going to check your credit and your credit score, your credit report, that will determine how much of the security deposit you need to put down on a cell phone. It could increase our, decrease, excuse me, our insurance product like homeowner's insurance, uh, auto insurance. And lastly, you know, having a good credit profile is a precursor to asset building. Ultimately, credit building would allow us to save, improve our financial stability, and ultimately lead to financial security. How much can poor credit cost you over a lifetime? Researchers found that when comparing people with poor credit to those with excellent credit, the lifetime cost of credit alone can be over $200,000. So you cannot afford to build your credit. Let's look at some examples of the cost of credit. In this example, we're looking at a $10,000 auto loan for a five-year term. We're comparing someone with a 500, 500 credit score, bad credit, and someone with a good credit score, 720. Comparing someone with bad credit versus someone with good credit, uh, the person with uh, good credit will save $62 on a monthly basis, you know, for the same loan, um, and $3,700 uh, over the five-year term. Um, here we have an example of a $250,000 mortgage with a 30-year uh, fixed interest rate. And what we are comparing here is someone with fair credit at 620 versus someone with excellent credit at 760. So as you can see, the potential savings of when we compare uh, someone that has fair credit versus someone that has uh, excellent credit over the, over 30 years, 
uh, it's 85,766. That is the potential savings of someone with, when we compare someone with fair credit versus someone with excellent credit. So what is credit building and how does it work? Credit building is establishing and maintaining active on time trade lines or installment and revolving that are reported to the credit bureau. So what's an active trade line? So trade lines could be either installments or, uh, you know, a loan or a credit card or a revolving credit card. So an active installment alone, three things must be true. It must have a balance. It must be paid monthly and it is not close. That's what makes an installment loan an active trade line. And when I mean active, meaning that there's activity being reported to the credit bureaus. And this, this is the strategy that we're going to use to increase your score. Next, an active revolving account. So credit cards or charge accounts, it does not need to carry a balance. And there should be at least one payment made in the last six months. So for a credit card, a revolving account to be considered active for credit building, you need to just have at least one payment made on the credit card within the last six months. Now for best practice, um, it's best to, to have a payment made on the credit card every month. Now I'm not saying to get into debt, what I'm saying is we can, you can, uh, if you have a credit card, you could maybe put your cable bill on auto pay with your credit card or, you know, something that you paid monthly, maybe your cell phone bill, uh, have your credit, you know, put it on auto pay. So you could pay, pay that particular bill with your, with your credit card and then just pay the credit card off in full every month. So that's one of the, that, that's a, a, a excellent way uh, to strategically build credit. All right, so now it's time to quiz you. An open credit card that you haven't used in a year, is it active? Yes or no? And the answer is no, it is not active. So remember, a credit card needs to have at least one payment made uh, once every six months in order for it to be considered active for credit building. All right, next, a deferred student loan. Is it active? What do you think? And their answer is no. A deferred student loan is not an active account. It's an open account. It's opened, it's not closed, but it's not an active account. Why? Because remember, a loan, three things must be true. Uh, it has a balance, you're paying it monthly, and it's not closed. So at the first student loan, uh, unfortunately, in this case, it is not an active account. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a deferred student loan means, a deferment basically uh, is, a, is an agreement between you and the lender that you're not gonna make payments on, on the loan for, usually it's for 12 months, uh, some student, some student loan, they'll capitalize your interest, meaning that they'll add the interest to the total balance. Um, others, uh, you don't have to pay interest on it, but it depends on the student loan that you are that that you are putting into the firm. Uh, all right, so let's move on. A car loan in good standing with a two thousand dollar balance is it active? What do you think? Yes, it's active. A car loan in good standing, if it's in good standing, uh, that means that you are paying it monthly. Uh, this, it has a $2,000 balance. And if it's in good standing, that means that it's not close. So the car loan meets the criteria uh, of an active installment. Next, a car loan that you paid off last month. What do you think? Is that active? Yes or no? Nope, a car loan that you paid off last month is not an active account. That's it, you paid it off. So once you paid off a loan, that account is no longer uh, an avenue for credit building. 
So if you paid it off last month, that means it doesn't have a balance. You're not paying it monthly and it's probably closed. So this is not an active account for credibility. And lastly, a collection account that you're making payments on. What do you think? Is that active or not? And the answer is no, a collection account is not, uh, does never, it never helps us build credit. Uh, even if you're making payments on it, um, that is not a strategy uh, to strategically build credit. Um, so with that being said, um, thank you for joining us for the first section of Credit as an Asset. I hope that you stick with us to the very end. Um, if you do, uh, what you what you will walk away with is the knowledge of how credit building works. Uh, you'll learn about what actions you need to take in order to build a strong credit profile. Um, you'll get access to safe and affordable credit building products uh, needed to build a strong credit profile and, and improve your scores. And you'll learn about the actions that you need to take in order to build a strong credit profile. So I hope that you stick with us to the end and I'll see you in the next class. Peace. All right. Bye.